He has no weakness to his game. He's got phenomenal hips. His ability to turn and run or if guys do double moves, he just moves seamlessly. <laughs> Thoughts from our guy Chris Sims on Jeff Okuda, the corner from Ohio State. One year as a starter, but it was uh, quite a year. A unanimous All-America and likely a pick you're going to hear very early in the Thursday night draft. And Jeff joins us now from Texas. All right, how's the waiting going for you? Uh, It's been hard just being patient, waiting for uh, tomorrow to come. But I I feel like I'm waiting all my life for this moment. Uh, what's your deal for the draft? Do you, uh, you would have had a suit and a whole, you know, look, and that's what draft guys do that big night, that night of your life. And in Vegas, it would have been all bling. What, what kind of uh, preparations are you going to have for tomorrow night when the camera comes to you? Oh, I'm definitely going to throw something uh, nice on. It won't be, won't be too bad, but uh, I think it's something that I want to uh, have photos for later and everything. Are you, you, you feel like you're missing out on any of this because it's not that big scene that the draft has been the last few years? Not really. I mean, I feel like uh, being around my family for the night, I think it'll be really, uh, really fun. Uh, we'll, we'll just embrace each other, and uh, it'll be a great night. Jeff, let's talk family here a little bit. Um, you lost your mom, Marie, a few years back, and when you <laughs> put out that note, uh, Players Tribune letter, that you were going to, turn pro and go put your name in the draft. You did it in the form of a letter to her. Can you tell us about her a little bit? Oh, uh, yeah. So my mom, um, we we're really close. She battled uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma for uh, over 10 years, um, made a lot of sacrifices. And um, I, for, honestly, I, I gather a lot of my strength, uh, my toughness from her because watching her battle against cancer, I think it was really, um, it's really been inspiring to me. What would she be proudest of if she could see you now? Uh, I didn't change. Stayed the same. Uh, I think uh, if she was here right now, she'd feel like she's around the same same son that uh, she was with uh, when she left. You uh, grew up in Texas. Uh, you spent a lot of time here in Texas before you went to Ohio State. Uh, when you got to Columbus, what was the atmosphere around the defensive back specifically that has given us guys like Denzel Ward and Eli Apple and cranking out first-round picks. What is it about that room that has done that with Ohio State players lately? The standard is just so high. So when you're, uh, when you're a part of that room, it's like the expectation is like almost like you have to be a first-round pick if you're a starting corner. And so, I mean, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like that's what you come to Ohio State for. You had one full year as a starter. Obviously, we're on the field a bunch before that. What did you notice in this season that took you uh, not just to the All-America level, but to this level where you're going to get picked probably in the top 10, top five of this draft? So I think the biggest thing was just um, getting with Coach Halfley. We had a great defensive coordinator come in, Coach Halfley, and uh, just studying the game from him. He taught me the X's and O's of everything. Uh, We bought into his philosophy. And I think what's most important is that we wanted to bring our secondary back to playing at elite level. And through that, through that goal, we ended up all playing at elite level ourselves. Sure. I mean, you could go at three. That's the Detroit pick. And obviously they don't have Darius Slay anymore. Chase Young slotted to go two by a lot of folks, defensive end on your team. Joe Burrow, who everyone thinks is going to go to Cincinnati, number one, was a quarterback when you were there. Have any of you guys discussed amongst the three of you that the three of us who were on the same fields practicing in Columbus could go one, two, three in this draft? Not necessarily with Joe, but Chase and I, we were always talking, just saying how it's crazy how we came in here um, out of high school and just how crazy the journey's been. And now it's like, we're about to get drafted tomorrow. So just thinking about the journey with him and how crazy it's been, um, it just feels so surreal. Let's talk about the preparation for the draft because it's been different for you guys compared to other classes. First, the workout part. What have you been doing to supplement not having the same access to training that you would normally have? Just uh, it's kind of so. What I'll do is I'll just call my trainer Clay Mack every morning. 
uh, we'll discuss a plan for the day and uh, how we're going to attack it. And then I'll just go out there and um, I'll get on my own and uh, I'll just knock out drills, do conditioning, do workouts. And so that's kind of been my routine every day for the last uh, five weeks. And have you been doing that with anybody else or just uh, on your own, by yourself, out at a park, out in the backyard? Where, where have you found the places to do the things that you'd be normally doing right now? So it's, I'll go out to my parking garage, top floor. There's a little hill over there. And I'll, I'll just run on that hill. I might go outside. It's like a little grass uh, patch of field. And I'll, I'll get my DB drills in over there. So it's kind of really been just a got to find innovative ways to work out. Like very old school. <laughs> <laughs> old school. I, I felt, I've been feeling like uh, Bo Jackson or Herschel Walker out there. <laughs> you kind of reminiscent of the hills that Jerry Rice used to run and some of that stuff that's the legend of NFL. As you watched the league last year when you knew you were going to go pro and you're watching the big games late in the season and the playoffs, could you see yourself <laughs> that that's going to be me in about eight or nine months? Uh, I think it was in my head, but at the same time, uh, I always try to just be where my feet are. So I know at the time we were uh, we were really trying to win the national championship, and um, I knew I had to put all my focus into that. So I really didn't have a chance to sit back and think about the whole process until I declared for the draft. Then you start the conversations with teams, and they're doing their interviews and, and all of that. As you've had to give a lot of the same answers to teams – what what have you discovered they want to find out about you? What are they asking you the most? What kind of leader what kind of leader you are? Um I mean if you're considered to be a top 10, 15 pick, they want to want you to be uh someone who's a leader in the locker room, a good locker room presence. So they've been trying to more so find out uh what kind of person I am. Uh not really what kind of player I am, but the person I am. And how are you answering them? Just straightforward, um hard worker. Uh, really uh, strive to be great. And, and I'm going to try to soak in game from anyone that I can. Oh. Then there's that hurdle you guys are probably going to have to deal with and not be able to get into the OTAs and the rookie camps right away after you get drafted. You'd be flying to that city and doing a press conference. Absent of that, how do you think the next month or so is going to look for you until you can start to become part of that team physically in that city? Probably a lot of a lot of FaceTime, Zoom meetings. Um, I know I want to reach out to some guys that are, have already uh, been in the league and just kind of figure out uh, what I can pick up from them uh, to make my uh, rookie year go easier. So uh, Oikos, the uh, the yogurt company, as uh, co got connected with you here, as it happens with a lot of companies around draft time. And what is this I'm hearing about an after draft party with Shaq? Can you explain that to me? Yeah. That, sounds, that sounds pretty cool. So um, pretty much uh, it'll be a, after the draft. It'll be an after draft party with Shaq. Uh, me and a couple guys probably tune in there and just have a good time. Uh, uh, promote the brand, everything that they stand for. Do you have any gut feeling on uh, where you're going to go or any team that you are hoping comes up to pick you, trades down, whatever it is? Do you have any... Gut feeling that uh, this is the place I can see where I'm going to end up tomorrow night? No, I think tomorrow is going to be a mystery. So <laughs> I'm just going to hope that um, I'm going to trust that God puts me in the best situation to uh, have really a really prosperous career. And who's going to be surrounding you tomorrow night while you're uh, going through all that waiting? Sister, my aunt, my uncle, my cousins. So it will be a lot of loved ones around me. Awesome. Well, enjoy being surrounded by family. Uh, I'm sure your wait's not going to be all that long tomorrow night, and we look forward to seeing you in the league. Jeff, congratulations on what's happened to this point, and good luck tomorrow night. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.